compromising? Somebody tell me, what did we talk about when we said about compromising? We shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what else did we say about compromising? Okay, we, talk, we, we learned last week about uh, Daniels and his homeboys and how by him taking a stand and refusing to compromise, it was a right? It made it that the people around him, I'm going to mute you guys for just a second. Um, it made that all the people around him saw his example, that Meshach, uh, Shadrach, and Abednego, which is their Babylonian names, they were in his corner because of him standing. Yes, um, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, because of his unwavering compromising, he impacted the three men that were with him. He impacted the eunuch, the head of the eunuch. He impacted the other Israelites that saw his stance. He impacted the staff that saw him not listening and he had a lot to lose including his life right so we learned that by him taking this stand and the stand was taken before he got into the situation which is a big deal because we have we had to realize that that means that we have to come to the situation already saying to ourselves this is our stance this is what we're going to do right the next thing that we asked last week, and then I sent you a text about it, is Daniel had to fear God more than he feared the situation. He decided it's more important for me to please my heavenly father, even if it means my life will be taken, rather than compromising and disappointing God. Now, the problem with that is when we think about our own lives and we think about what things we allow to influence us, it's not always God that's influencing us. Sometimes we don't want other people to look at us bad. Um, Michelle, can I pick on you for a minute, babe? Yes. Okay. Michelle had a really, really trying day today. Um, I'm just going to say that it was work-related. Because, like I said, I'm going to upload my portion of this, so I'm going to keep it really, really light. But it was work-related. She had to make some decisions. Either I'm going to do things the world's way and respond to crazy people crazy, or I'm going to stay in my calling of walking with God. That means that I don't get to respond the way I want to, you know, because we didn't talk about my responses to stuff sometimes, right? So she had to decide whether or not, am I going to take this uncompromising stance or am I going to respond like the world tells me I have a right to respond because of what's coming at me? This is what happened with Daniel. By the world standards, listen, dude, you could lose your life talking back to the, the king's men. I mean, what are you doing? You should just compromise and do what you got to do so that you don't lose your life. They're not going to treat you bad. It's easier to compromise. It is always easier to compromise than to take a stand. And if you look back over your own life at those moments when you had to make that decision, the easy way was always the one that was compromising. The one where you have to take a stand you're going to be cussed out. You're going to have people reject you. You're going to have people say, who do you think you are? Blah, 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 blah. Nobody wants to have that happen. So it's easier to compromise. And when we think about compromise, I love that Michelle, I mean, Carol said, what do we fear more than pleasing God? We fear what people think. 99.9% .9 of the time when we compromise, 
it's because we're compromising because of what folks think. And if you think in your own life, those times when you were worried about, is your boss going to look at you badly? Is your friends going to look at you badly? Is your husband going to think less of you? What are your kids going to think? What is your best friend going to think? What the women of the church is going to think, the usher board, the missions board, the deaconesses, all those folks, right? What are they going to think? But how many times do we seriously think, wow, I wonder what God thinks of me if I make this choice? 99% of the time, yes, or what will they do? Yes, you are absolutely right, Carol. 90% of the time, we don't ask ourselves, well, if I compromise, what will God think? Here we see an example of a man who it said that he had already decided in his heart that he was going to follow God. I sent you a text asking you, I sent you two texts, actually. Once, hey, darling, how are you? I missed you. Hey, sis, how are you? I'm okay. Um, I thought I saw my sister log on. I guess I didn't. Um, anyway, um, you maybe I got her confused with Latasha. Poor Latasha. I'm always sending her text messages, thinking I'm sending them to my sister. Um, when we think about it, we get into situations where we don't care about what God thinks but we care about what other folks think, which is really peculiar since it's really only God that can determine what happens with us. So, oh, cool. Well, I love you, darling. I hope you're feeling better. Um, So we're about to find out. We already know that he has, he predetermined that he was going to follow God. We already know that that he and his boys stood up to the king's men and said, no, we're not going to eat the king's dainies. We're going to do this instead. We already know that Daniel had decided to follow God at a moment in his life when the future was very uncertain, right? So let's read this. I'm going to read this paragraph down into the second paragraph, okay? We weren't here. We learned that Daniel told the king's um, eunuch, head of eunuch, that if you give me 10 days, we will not only eat well, but we're going to look better than those that compromise. So that's where we're picking it up today. Okay. At the end of the 10 days, their faces appeared fairer and they were fatter in flesh than the youths who ate the king's dainties. So the steward took away their dainties and the wine that they were given to drink and gave them vegetables. Now, as for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the end of the days, which the king had appointed for bringing them in, The prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and among them all was found no one like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king in every manner of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king, which the king, we're going to get through this part because I have something to say about this part, and the enemy didn't just start Bringing up all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, In every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters who were in all his realm. Daniel continued even to the first year of King Cyrus. Okay, I'm going to take you guys off of mute or you can unmute yourselves. Um, Okay, I don't know who the person is who just logged on, but if you could identify yourself so I don't have to to kick you out because I don't know who you are. Anyway, 
Um, one of the thing. Go ahead. I, I, it's Mia. I don't know why I didn't come up with my name. Oh, okay, no problem. And you can always rename yourself. But okay. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Mia. Hi. Uh, um, one of the things that we want to think about, especially for those that are teachers, mommies, or do anything with the youth. These were not old folks. These four men were not my age. These were like Jasmine age or younger. Why is that important? The word tells us that Daniel had predetermined in his heart that he was going to follow God no matter what. That's a big deal because when we're talking to young people, we can say, baby, young people were used powerfully in the word. David was a young person. So you don't have to wait until you old and gray to start serving the Lord. You can serve the Lord right where you are at any age. So we want to share these stories of young people on fire for the Lord. Michelle was just complimenting Jasmine at the young lady that she is, but that's a choice. She can choose to be any person she wants, right? Daniel had chosen, chosen before he even got into that situation. This is who I'm going to be. The question becomes, who have we chosen that we're going to be? When our, our, our spirit is put in the fire, who are we going to be? Have we predetermined that? Are we waiting for the day of battle before we go? That's not the time that we want to find out what our choice is. We want to start asking ourselves those hard, hard questions prior to getting in the fight. 